Hitherto, the impersonal has been regarded as the actual distinguishing mark of the moral action, and it has been proved that at first it was on account of their general utility that impersonal actions were universally commended and accorded distinction. Ought a significant alteration in this point of view not to lie just ahead. Now, when it is realized more and more that it is in precisely the most personal possible considerations, that the degree of utility is at its greatest also for the generality. So that it is the strictly personal action that corresponds to the current conception of morality as general utility. To make of oneself a complete person, and in all that one does to have in view the highest good of this person, that gets us further than those pity-filled agitations and actions for the sake of others. We all of us, to be sure, still suffer from the all too little regard paid to the personal in us. It has been badly cultivated. Let us admit to ourselves that our minds have, rather, been drawn forcibly away from it and offered as a sacrifice to the state, to science, to those in need, as though what would have to be sacrificed was, in any case, what was bad. Even now, let us work for our fellow men, but only to the extent that we discover our own highest advantage in this work, no more, no less. All that remains is what it is one understands by one's advantage. Precisely the immature, undeveloped, crude individual will understand it most crudely.